And we are back with the final extended segment interview with Steve Quayle. Now, I got to be honest with you. I remember about 15 years ago reading one of his books about genetic engineering and cross-species chimeras and how they were changing human DNA and how they already had human clones. And I thought, this guy's out there. Later, I actually checked the footnotes and found out it was actually even in mainstream news and in scientific journals that this stuff was going on. And he also, I remember more than a decade ago, I guess you could say Steve Quayle kind of radicalized Alex Jones a little bit, and I'm saying that sarcastically. He'd say they got NORTHCOM being set up for martial law and gun confiscation, and they've got re-education camps. And I'm like, I know they got some FEMA camps, but re-education camps. And now it shows how far down the rat hole we've gone that as, re as all this stuff comes out in the open, Steve Quayle is proven right about more and more, which is frightening because... Because if so much of what he's talked about is now admitted, I'm like, is the rest of it accurate? Uh, I mean, I know he's a good guy. It's just that none of us want to believe this. I know people that visit Infowars.com and, and you know, they see news about uh, Homeland Security doing secret testing. U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, Subsection 1528, Paragraph B. Aaron covered it extensively earlier. And, 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 and Dan Madondi expand on it. That's where they say they can do lethal testing on us if it's for experimental research. Now, the government can't do testing on us just regularly, but if it's for research, it's okay. I, I mean, reality is so wild that Aaron Dykes heard me today talk about that on radio, and he said, let me see that code again. And he went and pulled it up at thomas.loc.gov, and he said, my God, it's true. It says they're barred from it, but then says unless it's for experiments. So, so the point is, truth is so much stranger than fiction. I'd hear Steve Quayle 15 years ago on you know places like Coast to Coast AM, and he'd say, they're putting cancer viruses in the vaccines. And I'd go, look, I know vaccines are bad for you, but come on. Turned out all that was true. Uh, so he's got a lot of military sources, a lot of sources in Northcom. You know, he's out there uh, in that whole uh, area around Colorado. And uh, you, you know, you could say maybe they're trying to feed him disinfo sometimes. Well, they try to feed us disinfo. So, you know, you know the question is, we're not saying either one of us is 100% right. But I know Steve Quayle is trying to get the truth out, and that's what I'm trying to do. And let's hope that if we look at really how bad things are or how, or how bad they can get, that will cause an awakening that can back all of this off. But, hey, Steve Quayle deserves a lot of people's apologies out there because Steve Quayle has laid out so many things. I mean, take Glenn Beck a few years ago uh, saying that there are no FEMA camps when he knew full well there were. Now the FEMA camps are in the Emergency Centers Establishment Act. Uh, I'm ranting. I want to go to our guests. It's just that it's all there. The Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program. Uh, we'll put up some of these documents while he's talking, guys. The uh, the uh, uh, Army uh, plan for re-education camps, and you can link through to the Army's own PDF. They had, they responded to us and said, yeah, that's ours. You shouldn't have that. Their declassification of training for mass gun confiscation, like in Katrina. I mean, we're in trouble. The admissions on the news that we've been conquered by international banks and world government is here. Uh, that's all over the news. I mean, it's amazing. Steve Quayle, I don't usually get you on. You, know, you had been on about a year. I don't usually get you on and you know, toot your horn for 10 minutes before. But really, I wish you were wrong. I wish uh, that, that uh, so much of what you talked about wasn't coming true. And I kind of dread to hear what you say uh, is coming next. But first, let me ask you this question. Why do you think they're coming so out in the open right now? And then where do you see all this going? Well, first of all, Alex, they're on record as stating they don't care anymore to keep it hidden. When they thank the media, obviously David Rockefeller's famous quote, you've quoted it, I've quoted it, that they wanted to thank the media. They now are so convinced that they've got it in the bag. They've got the legislation with National Defense Authorization, 1867. They've got the foreign troops. And let me put everybody in remembrance. Ten years ago, 
I was talking about the foreign troops that were being brought into this country, NATO troops, and being placed in different military bases and alongside our troops. When you started picking up and I started picking up uh, a lot of the information about the Russians training here and 80 other nations training here, it started to dawn on people most of the United States troops are out of country and all these foreign troops are in country. Then when Hillary Clinton and Obama's regime came on board and they started talking about the United Nations small arms treaty that was going to disarm the United States citizens, most people would always argue about the fact that, well, U.S. citizens or, excuse me, U.S. military wouldn't fire on the U.S. citizens, and to a large degree, that's true. But by placing our troops in harm's way, and we'll get to that, because the card that's going to be played out in both uh, Iraq and Afghanistan is going to be our troops are going to be subjected to, once the Middle East thing starts, and Alex, you can take this one to the bank, I'll go on record as this, once we uh, uh, initiate or the whole World War III scenario unfolds according to the globalist plan and blueprint, then our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan get hammered, and uh, it will be a combination joint effort between Pakistan and Iran to destroy our troops. And guess what? Now we have NATO troops, which are here in the United States, ready to disarm. You've interviewed them. I've interviewed them. You've put videos up on your website. i put videos up on my website. And by the way, we that's not even... I mean, it's worse than that. They're admitting they've got troops in NLE 09 and others for domestic operations. They are admitting they've got Russian troops for anti-terrorism. Yesterday, and I'm so conditioned, I don't even cover it. Guys, type in Russian planes to take part in anti-terror exercise over America. And who's the terror threat? Gun owners, conservatives, libertarians. It's all coming true. Alex, the, the the disturbing thing is is that when the Russian sub was in the Gulf of Mexico, undetected Alpha class sub, what most people don't understand is the disarmament of the good guys in the military and their displacement is taking place at a record or breakneck speed. Canada had a five-day flyover for Russian bombers and nuclear bombers to map the entire country and all their defense installations. So what most people don't understand, I've said this, rape, pillage, and plunder, the United States is going to be uh, sawn asunder. And the point that you and I have primed to get people or have spent 10 years, 20 years getting people to recognize is this is now in play. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, Alex, it was warning and it was hard to swallow then. Now we've got Spetsnaz, and I laugh at people, uh, Lunev, uh, Viktor Suvorov, Vesali Matrokin, some of the most famous defectors in the history of the United States USSR Cold War, have told us that when you see Spetsnaz troops in America, Stanislav Lunev said, then you know that you've got about two months left before all hell breaks loose. We've got fires breaking out, which is just called uh, uh, pink terror. Then they move to gray terror. We've got fires at nuclear sub bases that they come up with hokey excuses that somebody got mad and set a fire. It's all BS. It's all it's all uh, pablum designed to throw us off track. We are now, and I don't know if you saw this, Alex, but now we've got the Russian generals going into NORAD. For most people, if they want to get a feel for what that's like, that's like basically having the hen house and asking the entire group of foxes that live in the entire country to show up uh, just to see what's going on. The uh, Russian defense establishment is in a place called Yamanatu Mountain. I think it's Y-A-M-A-N-A-T-A-U or something like that. That's, I guarantee you, we're not being reciprocated. So it is my contention that we are months away from a total takeover of this country for Foreign troops will be used to slaughter, my words, don't get mad at Alex for my statement, to take away the guns. And when they were geocoding and geopositioning all of our homes on GPSs, it was interesting, Alex. I live in a liberal neighborhood, and myself and two neighbors that are the only guys that hunt or have uh, weapons in this neighborhood that I know of, everybody else has Obama stickers, basically were the only ones that received the door-to-door, -door, if you will, uh, GPSing of our front door. And let me stop you because this is amazing. I'm glad you just raised this. You were on my show two years ago during the census, 2010, but that was going to be every 10 years. Now it's every year. And they've got these expanded ones where they ask how many guns you got, what type of toilets, what type of bank accounts. And I remember you saying, this is to mark GPS for weaponized drones. And people went ape over that. And, and the Comedy Central 
played a clip of it, of you on my show, and it was real funny. And then since then, they now admit they're arming the drones and using the GPS data, and the police in Texas said, we're using the GPS data from the census to mark suspects' front doors to, for drones. I, I mean, ex didn't somebody tell you a, a source, that's how you knew that, or did you just figure that out? No, no, I was told that by a certain four-star uh, uh, let's just say this, when I was really pretty well connected to the world of uh, uh, special operations, a certain general who was a good guy told me what a certain general who was a bad guy saying, they can't wait to send a Hellfire missile through my front door. Actually, they were a little more crude than that, Alex. They said they can't wait to, you know, shove it up my you-know-what. So the point is, is that uh, it became apparent to me that with the GPSing and putting two and two together and what I was told, that these guys are serious. Remember when you and I did a show, too, we talked about all of the tactics learned in Iraq and Afghanistan, and even when they were building U.S. cities and claiming it was for training them for the Middle East, you and I both went public and said, hey, Middle East cities and Middle East towns don't look like this. They're training for something. So when they talk about 30,000 drones coming online in a couple of years, they're already there. When they talk about Hellfire missiles, one general told me they have so many Hellfire missiles that basically it's hard to keep them in tow. So uh, I fortunately, Alex, or unfortunately, about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, had a predator over me at 100, about less than 100 feet. I was at the car wash, and I know what a predator looks like. And it's kind of funny because, you know, we had the story breaking that the Air, Air Force is teaching their drone pilots how to basically track people or people of interest. So I guess, you know, until you've had a, a predator over you, and I thank God, and I want to thank God for the people that are praying for your safety, Alex, and my safety, those intercessors who take God and, and believe in the power of prayer, because, look, you and I both know that we've talked and openly. We haven't hit it. And the people that will listen to this broadcast in real time, there are times when you and I would go on the uh, 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 talk shows, and I could tell by, you know, just how many people are listening through my site, or especially on Coast to Coast. You know, when you've got 40,000 federal computers coming in from every intelligence agency and every department of the military, somebody's interested in what you're saying. Well, that's right. If we were such kooks, as all this now comes true, they wouldn't be listening. And like you said, sometimes we have... Well, we have about a million people visiting InfoWars every day, but sometimes it'll be tens of thousands of government computers from highly classified domain names, highly classified IP uh, addresses, the geospatial, the CIA, the NSA. They are listening and listening hard. Their eyes are on us for a reason, because a lot of people in the government are actually patriots, and they know what's going on, and a lot of them are assigned to be listening to us, but I think that backfires on them because now the craziness of, of all this beginning to come true is sinking in out there with people. But you mentioned drones right up there in North Dakota. Third time the cows have come on the family's property, you know, under common law, you take them after that. Now they call them rustlers, call in an Air Force Homeland Security drone with the police. Uh, they're now announcing they're using them on us. Joseph Farah of World Net Daily. Drone over his house while he's walking the dog, a police drone. I'm driving into work. See a drone flying over the highway just three weeks ago. Uh, they've done FOIA requests and found out Homeland Security is watching our site constantly and is very concerned about what we're doing. Uh, so, so this is a foreign globalist takeover. What do you make of the bankers? And, and then I want to get into your sources and time frames and how they could try to stage this, and in your view, can we avert what's happening? But w why do you think they're on TV, CNBC, C-SPAN, hundreds of financial publications saying, yes, global government has taken over and America's been conquered? They use that term, that they've conquered us and that we're, quote, slaves. W are they trying to just get us acclimated, just like military drills in every city, TSA, giant black armored vehicles showing up everywhere, TSA at high school football games? I mean, I guess they're just getting us ready for martial law. What's happening?
Well, it's not only that they're getting us ready for martial law. Again, Alex, when the red list, blue list, green list came out, it was from a gentleman who's dead now. He was murdered for the information. He was with the Environmental Protection Agency. And what he told me in plain terms were, Steve, when this thing comes down, now remember, I started talking about this 10 years ago. It was only when uh, uh, the people started to realize that, hey, there's a lot of foreign troops and stuff going on, and what's with all, all, the, all the issues we've talked about? Alex, they are not coming to arrest people. The camps, they are coming to, and, and if you know the background of some of uh, uh, the, the writers, and you've talked about it on your show, that basically airs and others that the current administration listens to, they are talking and have talked for a decade that's necessary for 30 to 50 million people to die. My friend Gary, who gave me the information before he was murdered, said, Steve, the red list at that time was 30 million people. My general friends in special operations told me almost, uh, let's see, probably seven years ago that at that time, Alex, there were 425,000 NATO troops in the United States stationed in a lot of the military bases that had been closed down by George Bush Sr. And if you remember well, that, that's what's because... coming out. They've brought them in under NATO and put them in plain clothes with cover jobs as well. The bankers have done an infiltration op with sleeper cells all over the U.S., and that's begun to come out as well, just like right. they're using... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're right, and forgive me, because I know I get excited on this. The bankers are the controllers of the world. Jesus said the love of money is the root of all evil. My statement following up just in, in kind of making it easy, the control of money is the control of all evil. These are nothing more than mercenary forces designed to rape, pillage, and plunder. The United States has sold off our technology. We've sold off a lot of our water sources. I.E. Jesse Ventura did a, you know, one of his series on one of the Great Lakes that was sold to the Swiss, and they have claims to all the water. Uh, again, Alex, we have now, we are being pillaged and plundered. $17 trillion was stolen from the American middle class. Now, every day, I must post at least a half a dozen articles of how the middle class is dying, and, and, and there's no money, and people can't feed themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, $17 trillion was stolen by the biggest investment bank in the country and nobody goes to jail and absolutely Corzine gets busted with MF Global and then PFG Best and nobody goes to jail and yet you've got a prison system that has more people of uh, probably innocent or small minor crimes in prison because it's big business. Alex, what they're going to do, the bankers are going to initiate the destruction of the U.S. dollar and the euro, they're going to bring on a global currency, and that global currency, the entrance into it and requirement to be able to do commerce in the globalist new world order is the mark of the beast, what the Bible talks about, that no man can buy or sell, save he takes a market. And now, suddenly, they have in Texas, Department of Defense, in fact, pull this up or new viewers won't believe it, because I, when I first heard it, I didn't believe it. San Antonio, Dallas, you name it, they have... Department of Defense funded program with cameras that watch how much food the kids eat to analyze, and they've got a, cameras AI watching them in the schools, hooked into the Department of Defense to study behavior and stuff. They're now getting ready to face scan with a digital photo to buy and sell. Uh, you won't get discounts unless you face scan. It's called um, uh, face deals with Facebook, which they admit's Pentagon run. They are rolling out everywhere the cashless society, shutting down swap meets, shutting down garage sales, Amish, uh, lemonade sales. $2 million school cafeteria camera study creates controversy, and it goes on as Department of Defense, um, you know, running the whole thing. Uh, here in Austin, they make now the kids wear GPS around their necks. I mean, it's all here. It is so diabolical. And the government, I think this is a big deal. In Alabama, California, and other places are now giving little kids vaccines without parental consent. I mean, that is so illegal, but they just do it. I mean, the government is really moving faster now. And so we've had this soft takeover. You say they're getting closer to a hard takeover. 
Right, and I would encourage everybody to go on Doug Hagman's site because his source, which I know he's talked to you about, Alex, on the air, his source, Rosebud, has told him it's going hot. I think he just told him that in the last 24 hours. Now, it's going hot means that a manufactured series of events is going to take place, and they're going to portray uh, that the white gun owners in America are terrorists, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to initiate, which they've already done in their failed attempts at, uh, you know, the shootings uh, in Colorado and stuff, and uh, even even being called, Alex, I was called uh, through a cutout by a, a district attorney in another county saying they, they knew that there were multiple shooters, and they knew there were two military and two, uh, you know, local, uh, uh, if you will, law enforcement involved in the shooting, not helping, but are excuse me, not stopping it, but actually involved in the shooting. So right now they're getting ready. And I got to make this clear, brother. I go on with you. I know this. This may be the last time, God forbid, that you and I ever talk. But I'm telling you, they are getting ready to pull the plug. Pull the plug on people means once they initiate this, uh, this whatever the event is, everything's in place. How about this, Alex? I don't know if you've heard this yet. I just posted this as an alert on my website, stevequail.com. And by the way, I've gone to 24-7, okay? Yeah, I mean, in, in the old days, I had a webmaster. Now I'm able to post my own stuff. And since I don't sleep, I drag the most important stories, put them in there, and then, you know, we, we update my website 24-7. But here, this is today's posting. May I read this to you? Because it'll blow your mind. Yes, please. I wanted to, Steve, I wanted to let you know about a very strange thing I witnessed last night around 7 p.m. on Highway 2 just outside of Kalispell, Montana. Heading west on Highway 2, we approached what we thought was an accident. Fire trucks, a sign that said accident ahead, and firemen with signs saying slow. The fire trucks were blocking the right lane, which made you have to go around them, and then you followed directions, which placed you in front of two officers holding digital face recognition cameras. I recognize the camera, Steve, from when I had to go to Homeland Security for my TWIC card in Florida. There was no accident. There were big black bands of Montana State Police cars with Department of Justice below the Montana State Police sign. They were not stopping people. They were just taking their photos. And he says, may God bless us and help us all. The well, that's right. They're getting, I mean, that's admitted. They're now putting yes. veterans in these gang databases and they will, off face scanning cameras on the street, get your face scan if they don't have an up-to-date one to put in the database. So they want it to attach it to your, to your license plate so that they can create an integrated computer program. They've got license plate readers on the police cars now. I mean, don't the police understand that, that this technology is for the globalists to enslave us and that they are collaborators now when they're part of this unconstitutional stuff? with the globalists who are as evil as it gets? I think that they haven't made the connection. Now, let me tell you what the blue list is. The blue list are all the police and the military that cooperate for the first 30 to 60 days of the slaughter, okay? And then when they are done going along with uh, the plan of the globalists and the in the different uh, assassins, which are assigned to each police department, sheriff department, and uh, unit in the military, take over. Now, Alex, when we talk about Spetsnaz, Spetsnaz is Russian special forces. They're trained primarily for just general mayhem, assassination explosions, if you will. They're the fifth column operatives that go in and start taking people out and stuff. So it's kind of ironic. We're fighting with the Soviet Union. You saw the statement that Obama leaned over to uh, Medvedev and said, uh, wait until my second term, tell Vladimir that, you know, I'll have more flexibility. And uh, Medvedev said, I'll take it to Vladimir. The point that's in critically crucial and time sensitive for people to understand is the very positioning of the special forces, the Russian special forces, is indicative of the blue list takeout. Alex, I plead with law enforcement. I'll plead with those that will listen to this show. I plead with those who are in the three-letter agencies. You don't know what they've got planned for you after you go along with it. That's why they're going to sequester their families of law enforcement and of military and keep their families ultimately as a hostage. Well, that happens every time. The Soviets did that. Hitler did that with Night of the Long Knives. But, but the point is, how do you then look at George Soros and the globalists trying to overthrow Putin with all their groups? Because I see it as the globalists above all countries playing nations off against each other, even while they use the other nation uh, against the domestic population. 
Well, first of all, uh, Vladimir Putin is on record as uh, having talked to the premier of China that they, meaning China and Russia, are going to contest the Western, if you will, globalists. It's why China, obviously, is even, as of two days ago, was talking about backing their yuan, their currency, with gold. And I think, and that's mainstream now, Alex. It's one thing when I said it 10 years ago. It's another thing when people see it in the headlines. You know it. And I think that the point that, we, that people have got to understand is this, is that you've got factions in the uh, Illuminati that everybody wants to be the top dog. Nobody wants to be second to the top dog. Sure, the globalists are outside the nation states playing them off against each other. But Absolutely. Pe people don't understand that. It's not like the elite controlled Hitler. They psychologically profiled him. They, they, they wrote books about it. Put him in power, gave him money, and then set him up. He'd been told he was going to be able to take over. Same thing with Saddam. Same thing with bin Laden. Same thing with all these boogeymen. They're wind-up toys. Absolutely. And, and, and let me share this. It takes money for terrorism. It takes money for everything. And that's why the situation is becoming so out of hand. But it's also in your face. It's in my face, Alex. It's in your listener and viewer's faces. They don't care anymore. So basically, what's the time frame? I think that's critical. Obama, in, according to Doug Hagman, source at Rosebud, and then I got a call before I even saw that Doug had posted his story from a friend of mine in Colorado who stated that two, one DHS high-ranking guy and one military guy took their phone batteries out and went for a walk. And basically the name of the conversation was, the stuff is going to hit the fan in the next 60 days. Now, could it be prolonged? Absolutely. Setting dates is dangerous. But let me share this. The entire Spetsnaz doctrine of which Lunyev, who was not taken seriously by the Western press when he wrote his book and when everybody interviewed him, the bottom line is it's going exactly like he said. The secrets of the KGB archive is a bit, uh, Visali Matrokin. Absolutely the same thing. Victor Super. No, I remember that, and, and, and I remember 15, 16 years ago reading that stuff that had come out a decade before and thinking, this is just ridiculous. You know, stuff like Red Dawn and all this. But when you understand that the globalists have, have, have basically gotten all their operatives in, they're going to sell foreigners coming over here during civil unrest. I mean, I remember two years ago, there was the headline, even the Washington Post and uh, other publications, Toronto Star, you know, uh, Congress wants to know uh, about deals the Pentagon has with foreign troops during emergency. And we see U.S. troops in Canada for the Olympics. Then we see Mexican and Canadian troops here saying, yes, they're going to help fight terrorists. And then we see the new Army report out, which they're defending, which has been given to the Joint Chiefs saying, the Tea Party is going to link up with Al-Qaeda. I mean, who would ever believe that? Well, when they stage terror attacks and blame it on us, that's how this is going to happen. And sure, somebody who's informed will know it's bull, but the average couch potato is going to buy it. What do you make uh, of all of these preparations to demonize gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, uh, we've been told it's not Al Qaeda now. It's the uh, it's the gun owners, the libertarians, the white Al Qaeda. I mean, totally racial. White people are terrorists. They work with Al Qaeda. I mean, it's so over the top, ridiculous. One of the defense, or excuse me, one of the most uh, uh, in-your-face offensive plans of the Soviet Union prior to their complete takeover of the United States. By the way, and remember, Khrushchev said they'd do it. My, quit, my statement is it's being done right now before everyone's eyes, is to cause a race war and a race riot. The demonization of the white, and let's make it clear, when uh, Rob was arrested, you know, he made it his faith in Jesus stand. And unless people understand that in, in the world of law enforcement and the military now, Islam is good, Christianity is bad, okay? The vilification of Christians is the same as the vilification of gun owners, the same vilification as white. It's those white people's fault, and it's not. It is the Illuminati plan. It's Albert Pike, 
morals and dogma. It's playing out right like, you know, the Third World War and the contested letter from uh, Mazzini to Albert Pike, uh, you know, basically said they're going to turn the Christians against the Mohammedans, the atheists against the believers, and when everybody's killed off everybody, this is the bottom line, then they're ready for the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Alex, what I've been trying to tell people for the last 20 years on talk radio, there is a supernatural element to this thing, and, and you know, again, uh, I remember that your 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 ability to or your desire to know this stuff, you wanted to always have documentation, which is good. But now you've got documentation of some of the weirdest crap in the universe taking place, and and people are are being trained to just accept the perverse, the insane and the macabre as being normal. For instance, beheading people, cannibalism, all of the strange zombieism. And for the record, the zombie essay that I put out on my website, which in, is the most definitive thing, Sue Bradley, uh, one of the most famous researchers in the country. She used to be uh, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Thomas Moore's personal research assistant. She put out all of the zombie stuff. Uh, let me make it clear to everybody who a zombie is. To the elite, to the illuminous, the zombies are all those who are left above ground when all of the manufactured and the genetically altered viruses and all the mayhem is released. So and so they're creating a racial memory in humans that we're all going to die, accept it. Uh, all these shows on discovery and history about the world after humans, how beautiful it's going to be. Uh, they're pretty much just selling us on their religion that we're scum. And I have no doubt that they've been caught, you know, soft killing us. Let me bring this up. What about the Middle East, where they now admit in the L.A. Times, the New York Times, everywhere, that the CIA, MI6, and others are, from the beginning, funding al-Qaeda to bring down Gaddafi, who I'm no fan of, but he was working with the West. Get rid of him, set him up, mayhem, line up, 40,000 black people, kill him. I mean, it's hell on earth. And now going in to, uh, to kill the Christians, Jews, and... Uh, some of the Muslim minority groups to get rid of Assad. I mean, it is out in the open where where the New York Times shows video along with BBC, like it's good of them torturing people and then strapping them in cars to make them be suicide bombers or threatening to kill people's families if they don't. And this is Al Qaeda. And the CFR came out a month ago and, and uh, said we need Al Qaeda. The quote was we need Al Qaeda and said they were good. So. The TSA needs to grope me and my family to find out uh, bin Laden in my pants, but, but Al Qaeda is good. I mean, it, it just none of it even makes sense. The, the, well, the, I, the, I, yeah, yeah, I think it does. It's a redefinition of terms, and I, I told this equation. Let me, and you'll you'll pick this up really quick. They identify, they vilify, they nullify, they destroy. Who are they nullifying right now? White Christian gun owners, okay? Destroy. Well, when all the troops come, they've already got the homes. And look, I, I categorically reject the argument that there are 300 million guns in this country and they never dare do it. Listen, they know who's got what guns. They don't know every gun, but they do know that. And those who have been GPS, of which I'm one, and, you know, based on what you said, you may be one, but those who become... Uh, uh, if you will, problematic to them are the ones that are trying to tell the truth. Remember the old statement? An age of universal deceit telling the truth is a revolutionary act. So now the thing is, is that the redefinition of who the bad people are. Listen, I had an FBI agent, a special agent in charge in Bozeman, Montana, who quit the department because he was a Christian. And they said, you know, basically to him, Christians bad uh, Muslims, good. The whole idea of this war between Islam and Christianity, look at how it comes on the scene, basically as an offshoot of the United States backing the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against Russia. Well, the point is, is that uh, the entire fraud of 9-11, but Alex, the whole country is basically super saturated in lies. That's why Jeremiah the prophet cried out. He said, woe unto them who call good evil and evil good, where up is down and down is up, and right is left and left is right. The point is, is this is the classic 
and I use the word with no apologies, communist takeover, and it's going exactly by the book, like Bill Ayers and all the other weather underground writers were talking about openly in those days. And unfortunately, Jeremiah Wright, and, and what was Obama going to do? He was, he, it wasn't Rahm Emanuel, the one that was calling on uh, Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, to help restore order in Chicago? Good night. And so what we're talking about is a, a and I want to bring this up, all of the ammunition that we see being purchased, you know, and even the NRA and ILA are trying to make excuses, oh, it doesn't trouble us. Well, the caliber should be a tip-off. I believe it was your InfoWars article that I linked to, what was it, a year ago, Alex, where it showed all the uh, uh, little kids in their black T-shirts holding MP5, h and K submachine guns? You no, that was that? in the New York Times. They said Times, they yeah. said the Explorer Scouts are trying to take on disgruntled veterans, yes. and it showed photos of the dead veteran in the mock shootout. And then I confirmed the ROTC for at least 15 years trains to fight one enemy and one enemy alone. They take them out to fields, the officer candidates, and they train to fight militias and role players wearing John Deere hats. Dressed up like Elmer Fudd. So the whole threat structure has always been about Americans that are libertarian, constitutional Christians. And I told people, I said, this is a bait and switch. They run Al-Qaeda. They've staged this so that we'll launch all these wars to sap and bankrupt the country. Then they're going to flip the script on us. And that's what I wanted to raise. There's so many points. I mean, I can't even. $1.4 billion. It's not $750 million and $250 million. It's $1.4 billion plus in the last year, since uh, last fall, that they've bought 1.4 billion and, 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 and millions of new rounds a day being bought. Every agency, Department of Education, riot shotguns, people that aren't even sworn officers, armored vehicles digging in, food supplies. I talked to the big gunshot distributors. They say the police are lined up around the block. Government's arming, totally crazy gearing up to fight the American people. There's no doubt they're gearing up for this. My question is, what will precipitate it? The economic collapse, an Iran war, what are your sources telling you, and are there my, any ways to back this off? Yes, my sources, which are uh, high-ranking international bankers and military, both former and former intel people, are all saying the same thing. That, and, and one even said this, to get me a message. Tell Steve everything else is, is basically camouflage. Everything we are focusing on right now, and Doug Hagen was told this too, is the financial, the orchestrated financial collapse. Can I spell it out for people what an orchestrated financial collapse means in their world? I told people, Alex, before it appeared on the front of Drudge, that my sources had stated that there's going to be a cyber attack on the banks in the United States, okay? And that whole lie of 700 or 75 million, then they upped it to one point, uh, or I'm sorry, 250 million, whatever. My sources, who are the people that are connected with the people that monitor those type transactions on a worldwide basis, claim that in that short period of time, well, Drudge was saying that was 150 million or 75 initially, that it was in the hundreds of billions. So here's what's going to happen. Here's how I'm told it's going to play out, okay? Now, remember, when any operation gets exposed, they can change, modify, they can alter. So one of the good things, and you and I saw it and happened, you remember when the whole world was ready to go to uh, uh, basically a fourth level biohazard? Yes. And we prayed, Alex, and you let me pray on your show, and the people who are listening to us prayed. That went from being ready to be implemented in 24 hours to completely dying the very next day. You remember that? That yes. was the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest uh, uh, manifestation of God's love and intervention and caring for his creation because they were all set to go. We're told we're going under martial law. That's when I came up with with a statement quoted on your uh, show, shot in the arm, shot in the head, either way you end up dead. We saw that happen. Now I'm being told that you'll go to sleep on a Friday night. Between Friday and instantly between the times that the overnight hot money changes hands, there will be an orchestrated cyber attack on the major banks of the world. It, let's say you and I and 10,000 of our listeners all have our accounts in, called Happy Go Lucky Bank. 
And Happy Go Lucky Bank obviously has its internal uh, that Alex, you know, has a thousand, Steve has a thousand, or whatever. The point is, is that the entire income stream in the account of Happy Go Lucky Bank is going to be attacked. Concurrent with that is all ATM machines will shut down and that all uh, credit cards will be stopped. Now, this is what I'm being told by some of the highest-ranking people and most well-placed people. When it comes to the Monday morning and everybody starts to scream, that will give them a platform, them, the Illuminati, the globalists, the current uh, members of the uh, uh, ruling uh, dictatorship in this country, United States, and the military. That's when they kick into high gear. They'll claim it was a foreign nation, blame it on somebody other than them, and in essence, they're going to create the problem, they're going to provide the solution, and in providing the solution, they're going to prove once again that the Hegelian dialectic is when you create a problem, you provide the solution, your answer always brings about your desired uh, result. So that's what I'm told is going to do that. I'm also told that concurrent with that will be an exchange in the Middle East. I said, well, it'll be a day, an hour. They said, that's flexible, but you can expect it all to go down because the international bankers will have done two things, Alex. They will have plundered the entire United States savings and, and financial resources. Understand, it's just computer entries, and they will have succeeded in drawing the attention away from them. Remember this, uh, the head of banking, I think it was Rothschild himself, Amschel said, or one of the Rothschilds said, we make more in one day of war than an entire year of peace. No, that's and you, it. And, and that's why they're also famous for funding all sides of the conflict. Absolutely. Uh, so they debilitate both sides. This is full spectrum dominance. Here's the issue. All of this stuff is out in the open. There's massive preparations for total bedlam. We would be insane to not be looking at this and talking about it. But the PSYOPs officers, and I've talked to some of them who are retired and some of them that have gotten out, have said that they're always there trying to discredit people that are trying to wake people up out of their trance. Government's too big, it's out of control, it's stomping our liberties, the NSA admits it's spying on us without warrants while protecting Al-Qaeda, uh, the government's doing fast and furious, it's criminal. So bare minimum, it's good to be concerned about government, as our forebearers, our founders said. Anybody that says we're the bad guys for talking about this, in mainstream media or in a position of power is an operative or is being handled by one. Our enemy is apathy. Apathy, as one caller to my show said, is treason. And undoubtedly, the fact that you and many others are out there and our listeners and viewers are out there has been what has been holding this back. Zbigniew Brzezinski uh, said it two years ago that their whole program's in trouble, humanity's awakening. Uh, he, he wrote a book this year where he talks about the five big things facing the elite. Number one, he says, is the awakening. So they've got to, before their new world order was behind, now they've got to accelerate it because they're going to lose it if they don't. So they're so arrogant, they admit what's going on like we're not reading it. I mean, because their whole attack is tailored towards unconscious people. Uh, well, I, and, and, and they're working overtime with, with, with the electronic mind control. This is MK Ultra on steroids, okay? They have numbed and dumbed. The first thing everyone has to do is turn off the network news. Good night. You and I and others who, who have spent, you know, our lives and our, our, our fortunes, meaning all that we've done to try and warn people and get people to wake up, they have got to understand that within the media of mainstream network news. That is the control function. Imagine this, Alex. Imagine having, uh, you know, 100,000 volts, or let's use amps, wired into your skull. They have numbed and dumbed us down. They have given us the opiate of entertainment. So the thing is, when you're producing your videos, when you're out doing what you're doing, when I'm out screaming on coast to coast, when we're both uh, doing everything within our power, it's when people turn off the TV and start to search out a thing. Remember my favorite line, and I still use it, is, look, I've done my homework. Don't tell me weather modification isn't real. I wrote a book out of it with 400 footnotes. Don't tell me that chemtrails are real. Remember when I broke the story of chemtrails, even before Thomas and all those other guys got on board, and, I st and, and it's amazing to me that still people want to debate whether chemtrails are real or even not. Even when, 
even when the government is admitting that they've got secret programs. It's all done under national security. That's the opposite of national security. It's the umbrella of secrecy with our tax money that the globalists use to totally take over society. I want to play that uh, clip of Mr. Grafwall, uh, the infiltrator of the Weather Underground, who were later convicted of this, uh, where they openly talk about killing 25 million of us, that 50 million would have to go to the re-education camps, and half of us would have to be killed. Th these are the people he's in the meeting with that raised Obama and that he lived with, and now we have the Army Manual where they're training him for re-education camps in America. The nightmare is coming true. It's happening, and denying it will only let them take over. Here it is. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And I've interviewed him recently. Um, the uh, gentleman that broke that down, and that all came out in court as well. Um, your comments on that, Steve Quayle? Well, it goes along with everything we know, everything they're trained for. And by the way, when he said that, the difference is now, now they're talking, Alex, they have to get rid of 50 to 75 million. Get rid of, and I want people to understand this, once this comes down, the knock on the door isn't coming to say, oh, will you please turn under your guns and have a nice day and go back and watch whatever mindless show. They're not only coming to take you away and blow you away, but to steal your stuff. One of uh, a Hawk who was listening in on a recorded message of a Canadian military, high-ranking Canadian military general, who was openly laughing about the Americans going to be pillaged. Look, if you take 30 to 50 million Americans and you basically waste them away, take them away or blow them away, they got a lot of stuff. That's the payment that has been promised to all the troops, okay? The plunder, if you will. Everything that they're going to take, it doesn't matter if you got a nice SUV or whatever, that becomes plunder to the people that are taking over this nation. This is something that, and, and when that thing was let known in real time, it sent shockwaves through the intelligence community. Even the, you know, a pretty high-ranking general got balled out for making that statement in the open. But you see, I believe God is warning us. And I, I want to bring that, that whole issue up right now because, listen, we are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mainstream media is the message. It is the madness. It is a mind control. So when you go out and I go out and we do everything we can to warn as many people as we can, apathy, indifference, laziness, and, and, and right now, Alex, so few people will stand up. God bless those who do speak up the bottom line is is that they're going to be confronted with overwhelming forces let's face it you and i can't outrun a hellfire missile 
with a, uh, you know, an attack helicopter. Over I hear there. you. Listen, uh, you mentioned this. I know it's coming up on your radio show uh, this evening, so we'll give people all the times for that. And it's also re-aired. But you talked about Mr. Hagman. We're going to go to break here and get him on with you with that breaking news from his source um, that uh, has been breaking down the fact that they're being told all hell's going to break loose in October uh, or November, late October, early November. I've had police call in when they had tanks rolling around St. Louis. Uh, and, and police I later talked to off air and confirmed they were police that had been told the hammer will be dropped uh, in early November as the October surprise. Uh, we've seen in the news that preparing for civil unrest. I'm not saying it's 100% going to happen because we can get a reprieve or we can expose it and back them off. Because if the globalists gauge that they can't pull this off and then poses the saviors, they may back off. But they may have also put things in motion that they can't stop. I want to get your take on that. But as we get ready to go to Mr. Hagman to give us an update and uh, to get your comments, Steve, in closing, here is a clip of that county judge for folks outside Texas. That's the, the, the mayor of the county uh, out in Lubbock, Texas, pretty big town, city saying they're not going to go along with U.N. troops and world government and that he needs more deputies to fight the U.N. Well, the problem is it's going to be our, our military mixed in with the U.N., our military that will follow orders from what I've seen. Here's that clip, and we'll get your take on that. Civil unrest, civil disobedience, civil war, maybe. I and mean, we're not talking just a few riots here and demonstrations. We're talking... We're talking Lexington, Concord, take up arms and get rid of the guy. He's going to send in U.N. troops. I don't want them in Lubbock County. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stand in front of their pers armored personnel carriers and say, you're not coming in here. Mm -hmm. And the sheriff, I've already asked him, I said, are you going to back me? He said, yeah, I'll back you. Now, Steve, we're going to get Doug Hagman on here in just a moment with the breaking news he's got from his source that you were kind enough to inform us of. Uh, that it had just broken over at their site. You've got links to that at stevequell.com. It's up there at the Northeast Intelligence Network website as well. We're going to go to that uh, here in just a moment. But, Steve Quell, what did you make of the clip uh, that we just played and, and, the, and the big national news of that county judge saying we're not going to put up with a globalist takeover? Well, first of all, I think he's probably one of the most outspoken, honest men in the country. Thank God that he's a man and and absolutely stood for what he believes and is standing up for what he believes. And I, I got to tell you, every single person that listens to you, Alex, and listens to me and listens to Doug has got to adopt that attitude that we go for broke because my prayer is, look, we can't stop these guys totally, but we can raise the awareness of those in the military and the law enforcement and understand that they're going to be killed murdered by the same group of people that are trying to get them to murder us and so i would say this anybody who uses a statement that you're just following orders or that you're just basically doing what you're commanded to do that's called the nuremberg non-defense it didn't work for hitler and won't work for that's you. right don't be a collaborator and uh, steve was telling us tonight on his radio show you can find out more at stevequell.com uh, and uh, also on their nightly show, the Northeast Intelligence Network, they're going to be breaking all this down together. But to give us a, a quick breaking peek uh, at what the source is saying is Doug Hagman. So I'm going to turn back and talk to him, joining us on quick notice via Skype. Doug, uh, I know you got to go quick here, but uh, tell us what's breaking over there on your site. Well, Alex, as you said, uh, the, the, well, the bottom line here is I've got a source from the DHS that said it's going hot, uh, meaning the plans that they have in place uh, have been approved, approved at the highest levels of the White House. These are uh, orders, plans, uh, orchestrated stage events uh, coming from the White House and being coordinated with uh, Janet Napolitano. Now, this is from, uh, uh, according to my source, uh, Valerie Jarrett and some, someone else that's involved in the higher echelon, uh, the closest circle of the president. Now, uh, what it is, when I say it's going hot, or when my source says it's going hot, is a stage event of some kind or some sort of uh, false flag type of event to uh, to garner sympathy, to garner support for, for the uh, president who's maybe lagging in the polls, who might be, uh, 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 you know, in, in, in fear of 
having to vacate the Oval Office in, in November. They would institute a plan. Now, they've got a couple of different plans, according to my source, and they, they change them with events, just like we saw with the hurricane. With uh, with Biden, okay, there, there was some talk about, in fact, in the, uh, I believe uh, other people have talked about perhaps a false flag or stage event with Biden because they couldn't figure out where Biden fit into things. Well, uh, according to my sources, look, they've got uh, contingency plans upon contingency plans, and that was one of them, okay? Uh, so, so the bottom line here, I guess the real news is this. According to my source... They want to go ahead. When I say they, I'm talking about the Valerie Jarrett's, the uh, uh, the labor leaders, the people who benefit most by Obama being in office, and who want to see the another four years of of uh, fundamental transformation of this country. It's them who are saying, "Look, let's ensure his uh, reelection. If we can't ensure his reelection through votes, then we're going to ensure it through uh, controlled." Uh, through controlling the opposition, controlling the voting process, and even perhaps suspending the elections, which is incredible. I know it's Looney Tunes talk, but... Um, but it's not know. Looney Tunes talk. We had all those White House advisors, the Financial yeah. Times of London, their fundraisers saying, don't worry if he gets down on the polls. There'll be an event, a new Oklahoma City or 9-11, we'll blame on the Tea Party, we'll blame on Alex Jones, Glenn Beck. I mean, that was all said... And you're saying your source says, I mean, they did Fast and Furious, so they could be capable of doing anything. That's why we have to look at this, and that's why this is such big breaking news. Continue to uh, elaborate on this, and then we'll learn more tonight when you guys break this down with Steve Quell. But I want to get Steve's take on this. What else did your source say? Well, uh, to, to expect this, uh, it's going to depend on the series of, or it's going to depend on how things work out or how things play out. But one of the one of the things is uh, to expect it uh, uh, when you least expect it. And this is something I didn't publish. Uh, and also to um, uh, whatever it, it it is going to be, it's going to galvanize. It, it's going to uh, polarize. I should say. Uh, various aspects of our country, the rich versus the poor, the black versus the white. I mean, it's going to cover a gambit of, of, of things. That's what my source is saying. Well, uh, you notice they, I mean, the White House got caught sending in agitators of the Trayvon Martin deal. Yeah. But, that, but, but people were too smart on all the sides to take the bait. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, they are, I mean, they are really trying to get us fighting with each other. Well, yeah, and I think, and to your credit and to C's credit, to people who are speaking out against this, um, you know, and, and you had mentioned earlier, what if this is just nothing more than a, uh, a disinformation campaign? I thought of that. It very well, it could very well be. And and if that is the case, then then so be it. How do you tell? I don't know. But the fact is, uh, this guy, who I believe this guy, I've known this guy for a quarter century. Um, look, he's 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 given me a lot of information in the past, and he said these people are very serious. These people want. I mean, look, it's going. It, it, you know, it's it, this is right now um, the, the start of of what could very well be a, a dramatic. A change in in America itself, and uh, well, the globalists are running around like it's the end of the world, digging in everywhere, arming themselves, and they know they've got to get this collectivized new world order in. But I mean, you know, Romney's not much different than Obama. I don't know why they don't let you, you know that just coast in. But there is there are those Chicago mafia criminal elements that are so virulent that that they may want to keep that particular management team in place. We know there's fights within the whole New World Order system. Your yeah. sorts in uh, DHS, do they say anything about, uh, I mean, I'm just throwing out questions I would ask about other people in DHS. I mean, is there anything they won't go along with? I mean, obviously, they're concerned if they're telling you stuff, they're telling me stuff. We get, you know, a lot of breaking news as well. I mean, the word I get is that police and military and, and even feds, even though they've tried to pick bad people, are just totally freaking out right now because everything that the conspiracy theorists talked about is coming true. Now, which is true. Your information is accurate, and I know you've got some fantastic sources. The the, uh, the rank and file of DHS, of the law enforcement agencies that, that are involved in DHS, yeah, in fact, they're fed up. They're, they are freaked out, for lack of a better uh, descriptive term. But in particular, one thing that really got to me was the fact that uh, we all recall the, uh, the, the, the sexual component to the Napolitano um, uh, staff picks. And, Lesbian and, and, parties, yeah. Exactly. 
exactly. That, they almost, according to my source, uh, they almost lost control of this information, uh, of, of, I shouldn't say the information, of the compartmentalization of the information because uh, it was during one of those um, situations, let's just say, that uh, <laughs> there, was something, there was something said. And, and it, was, it was done in such a fashion where there, in fact, uh, uh, <laughs> they are they are very adept at, at using uh, uh, sexual perversions for blackmail, and and that's why they're bringing these people in. I mean, uh, look, blackmail is blackmail, and of course, if you're well, they want to bring in mentally defective uh, yeah. people. That I mean, it's one thing to have those sexual persuasions, but you know, just the domination, the craziness, the wildness of these souped up. You know, hyper male. You know, I mean, these women take testosterone. I mean, I mean, and that's the whole culture. They're crazy people, basically, and they can't help it. That's who the globalists want is just lunatics who would order T. I mean, say which one about Bush. They didn't have TSA fondling children and women at the airport. I mean, this is a group taking their sick domination out in the open. They're criminals. Criminals always get reckless. Yeah, and, and I got to tell you, you know, you were saying that before, long before I was. Steve Quayle was saying that long before I was. And boy, I'll tell you, what a wake up call I received when, when you know, I, I realized everything you've been saying is true and everything that Steve's been saying is true. And, and to have somebody from, D, uh, you know, the, detached to DHS, law enforcement officers say, hey, look, this is what's taking place. And it is. And, and, and so we, I, and to, to really sum it up, at this point, I believe, based on what my sources told me, we are at. At the point now where there has been a commitment given by whether it's Valerie Jarrett or someone else close to Obama, perhaps Obama doesn't even know about this or has a suspicion, but he's not in on the necessarily the integral planning of this. But that final go-ahead has been given, and certain conditions have to uh, exist or should exist before uh, the, whatever it is. Well, there it is from your source. There's the headline. Uh, home, uh, you know, globalists to stage false flag for Obama or false flag trigger to be pulled for Obama. I mean, you think that's an accurate headline? I do. I do. Uh, very much so. Yes, I do. And and I think, you know, uh, Canada Free Press picked up on this. Judy McLeod uh, had written a story yesterday that kind of set the stage. Yeah, and we didn't collaborate on anything uh, for this article about, uh, you know, the uh, about uh, uh, staging a false flag event. And, uh, well, I mean, I mean look, look, look. We've got all these advisors saying, gee, it would sure help us. Now Obama's in trouble. Uh, and uh, everybody better have their eyes peeled for this. You guys are going to cover this more uh, tonight. People can find out at stevequell.com or Northeast Intelligence uh, Network's website. Uh, in fact, give people that site again. It's uh, Alex, thank you very much. It's homelandsecurityus.com. It's homelandsecurityus.com, not affiliated with any government website. Sure, and, we, and we've had that up on screen as well. Uh, let's bring uh, Steve Quayle in here, who's on the show tomorrow. I think we should get you on after uh, him tomorrow. He's on at noon, the uh, radio show tomorrow. Uh, Steve Quayle, give us your take on what you just heard, uh, because you were the one while we were on air that alerted me uh, to Doug's new report, so we got him on with you uh, at, at the end of this in-depth interview. Uh, this is just chilling, because this fits into all the preparations we see, and then the criminals are so arrogant, they're writing op-eds you know, in major publications going, don't worry, there'll be a big staged event we'll blame on people. I mean, they're so arrogant, they don't even put one inch of separation. They don't say they're going to stage it. They just say, don't worry, fundraisers. It doesn't matter if we're down the polls. We'll, there'll just be something staged. We'll blame on the Tea Party. I mean, they're now suspect number one, Steve Quayle, when there's a vent. I mean, aren't they? Well, absolutely, but it, it gets back. Alex, to the same thing. Everybody other than them is a target to be destroyed. They have assassination algorithms. We'll talk about that maybe tomorrow on your show. But again, Doug, why don't you give out the Blog Talk Radio uh, the, that, that address, too, because if it's on Blog Talk Radio under Hagman and Hagman, right? Correct. Uh, and, and, Steve, the, the uh, best way to do it would be just to go to uh, either, well, you, I think you've got a link up on your website. If not, HomelandSecurityUS.com. Click on the Listen Now button. Yeah, that's why I sent them there. And, and, and Doug, if you can do it in the hour after Steve tomorrow, um, that'd, be a, uh, that'd be 1 o'clock Central. I'd like to try to get you on because, because again, 
Even if this is disinfo they're giving your people, all the preparations are there. We know they'd stage this so they could get away with it. We may be able to stop them if everybody runs around like chickens with their heads cut off right now, getting this info out. That could, or do you think if they've committed, they're still going to pull the trigger? Well, Alex, my, my source said, look, you got to make this public. You got to let people know about this because it could very well stop this. It could very well. Oh, that's this. key. Oh, oh, really? What do you. Uh, well, well, yeah. Now, I, I mean, this has been, of course, he's been saying that since April because this, this, by the way, this story is 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 the culmination of a series of conversations yes. we've had. So, yeah, and, and every time he said, "Look, the more information you can pump out there, the more sunshine you can put on this, the more exposure you can get on this, the less likely uh, they are to expose, you know, their their uh, or to, to to go ahead and do this because of the backlash. I mean, look, they, they want the backlash, but they're afraid of an informed backlash. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, um, it, it, sure. I mean, they're wanting they're wanting to get away with this and be able to launch it and not have people looking at it when it happens. Yeah, they want the response. In other words, uh, for example, using the Trayvon Martin shooting. You know, uh, uh, supposedly a which it wasn't a black on white or a white on black crime. They want that knee jerk response. But if you know ahead of time that hey, this is going to happen, this is being planned, it's going to happen. Well, you know, then the response can be tempered, and of course, it won't work. It'll Did, be sure, sure. I mean, you can diffuse it or partially de right. uh, diffuse it or misdirect it. Did he give any ideas? on what it could be. I mean, it sounded like he was alluding to this will play race and, and, and financial groups off against each other. Yeah, you know, he's stuck right along with uh, since day one. Uh, there's a racial component to this. There's an economic component to it, a huge economic component to it, and just a general chaos aspect of the revolutionary component uh, of, of the people involved. Um, so, yes, the, the economics and race and class warfare. All right, we're going to talk about it tomorrow on the radio for the second and third hour. Mr. Hagman, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again uh, tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right, uh, closing comments, Steve Quayle. Well, first of all, these are creatures of darkness, Alex, and so all the light we can get uh, placed on them is good. But the point is there is a supernatural element to this, and evil of this nature cannot just be combated by shining the light on it. And I'm telling everybody, I'm saying this, I'm saying it is time to pray and intercede. Intercede means to call upon God to show you what you have been blind to so that you can get your families out of harm's way. I believe a little differently than Doug does because I got an, a call, I think I shared that with you at the beginning of our talk before we went to recording that uh, two people went out in the field and talked and they basically said it's coming down you cannot put all this military into the field have all of the secret stuff going on the positioning of artillery tanks uh, drones missiles being taken out uh, all these different sleeper cells activated they are going for it there is a timetable in the Middle East we can talk about that tomorrow try and tell people what will be the specific things to look for but again, if, if this goes for everything a person owns, including their freedom, if you can't touch it, and you don't own it. So you have to be able to know this, that everything that you've taken for granted, whether it's your food, your medicine, your clothing, your vehicles, everything is in the globalist. They want it all, Alex. They amazing, amazing. They want it all. All right, Steve Quayle, thank you. We'll talk again tomorrow on my syndicated radio show, and I'll be following what you cover uh, on the radio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. All right, folks, there goes Steve Quayle. Ah, man, these are the times that try men's souls. Everyone can feel the energy. You can see intellectually what's going on. I agree we should pray to God to, uh, you know, reprieve this country, but uh, nobody reprieved the 50-plus million babies that have been aborted. You can see it all building up. I hope we get the word out and back this off. You know, we've backed off the Iran attack multiple times. We've backed off so many other things that the globalists will use to bring in their new world order. Uh, but everything is lining up right now. And, uh, well, that's it for this super extensive uh, InfoWars at Nightly News. That's why I'm doing the Sunday radio show. It's why we do the Nightly News, because so much is happening. It takes this much time to cover everything. So please get the word out so we can back this off, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Jones signing off. Until tomorrow, Lord willing, please pray for us. God bless you all.